You know, I think the the only other question I would have would circle back to the very beginning and um, might be an interesting place, at least from, from my end of it, to, to land the table is kind of getting, or land, land the table, <laughs> land the plane, um, bad metaphor there, uh, would be just, you talked about how, what a beautiful place the Orthodox, or the Coptic Church is in today. And I think a lot of um, my my followers might not be familiar with that. And so I think, especially the, the Coptic uh, church in North America. Uh, I think that's where uh, maybe majority or plurality of my, my followers uh, are at, but I think a lot of them just won't have any familiar, like many of them will never have seen a Coptic uh, Orthodox church. They might not know many Coptic Orthodox Christians. So I would love to hear kind of what it's like to be a, a Coptic Orthodox uh, Christian in North America and what, what you see God doing in, in the Coptic church in, in North America at this time. Cause I love the kind of infectious, uh, enthusiasm you had for it at the beginning. Yeah, I mean, uh, like I said, um, the Coptic Church has been in the immigration land for about 50 years. Um, the, the, the first priests had a lot of difficult work to do, and, they, and they've established a good foundation um, for the other generations to follow, and, and that's beautiful. Uh, and what is very exciting uh, about the church today is that, you know, you can clearly see its future, uh, meaning the youth in our churches are just so beautiful. Obviously, there's always a spectrum uh, of people in the church, the ones that are really, really deep into God and, and really, really enjoy God, the ones that have one foot in, one foot out, right? And one, the ones that are, you know, are in need of repentance and might be a bit lost, like like every other denomination. Um, but I, what I find so refreshing is that with all the evil in the world and the darkness, um, you know, the, the youth that we have in the church, starting from high school, even elementary, I mean, when we talk about liturgy, you know, two, three hours liturgy, we have midnight praises Saturday nights, which are also two, three hours. We have Vespers before that. We uh, we take them on retreats. We have like a Bible Academy, we have Sunday school, like you, you name it. But what, what you see in them is is just God at work and um, so even if there's so much evil on the outside you know you can tell that they have tasted Christ they have tapped into him and they get to enjoy him and you know when you find someone in grade eight grade nine and they're like being the light of the world and and you know when you take them on a retreat like in a monastery and uh, I mean it's difficult right you, we wake up this is like, I don't want to scare you but, or scare your viewers either, but this is like how the monks and the nuns live. And when we, when we go on these retreats for a week, we live like the monks and nuns live, right? And and that means we wake up at 4 a.m. like for midnight praises. Uh, we have a liturgy again, two, three hours every day. We have a Bible study, we have a topic, we have work to do. Um, I mean, it's a jam-packed schedule, right? And um, what happens after a day or two of detox from the world is that the youth start seeing God face to face and they enjoy him so much. And then they come back and they just, they're the light of the world, right? So when you have, when you have this gift uh, at that age, when you have youth in grade eight and nine and so on and, and, and older, obviously, um, while they're facing all these temptations in the world, they, they choose Christ. Um, and they're preaching to their friends and, and they're being the light of the world, right? And, you know, I, I look at them and I, honestly, I couldn't be prouder. Like, and, and I wish I was half of what they are now when I was their age, right? Again, the church, when I was younger, did not have all these activities and all these trips and they did not have all these monasteries in North America to go to. So I personally did not have these opportunities, right? So I look at them and I'm, I'm, I'm so happy. Um, so, so in the Coptic church, we have, we don't have the problem. Uh, I'm not belittling anybody else, obviously, but we don't have the problem of empty pews. Um, and we don't have um, the problem of running after people. We still do because there are, you know, prodigal sons and daughters that are in need 
of visitations and so on. But we do this because it is God's commandment and out of love for them. Um, we we don't need people to come. We don't ask them for money. We don't we don't do any of these things. People want to come, and we're happy that they're there um, because they are the body of Christ. And uh, I think part of the Coptic tradition is that the higher you go up in the church, the more you wash people's feet, right? And 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 we've seen this in bishops and priests. Um, we are blessed with an amazing bishop. I'm not going to say more than this, but just uh, for his sake. But um, so so looking at all of these things together and looking at the direction the church is taking, uh, even in terms of evangelizing, right, for, for the sake of others uh, and the Holy Spirit working in only 50 years in the immigration land, I, I couldn't be happier, honestly. Uh, I have to admit that 10 years ago, that was a question mark for me. So when I was ordained um, about 12 years ago, um, I wasn't sure what to expect, wasn't sure what to do. Um, prayed about it a lot. Um, but it's so nice to see fruit in the youth. And then you, you see, you see the future of the church, like I was saying earlier. Um, and that is why I believe that the church has a lot to give. Um, and I, I do see that people are hungry for God, are hungry for something stable as well something that is unchangeable. And, and I think you touched on that a, a bit earlier. Um, and I think the Coptic Church has all of these things. And uh, I mean, personally, whether uh, people find uh, their salvation and their comfort and their joy in Christ through, you know, the Eastern Orthodox Church or, or whatnot, you know, like, I mean, it's, to me, that that's beautiful. Like, I would never encourage them, oh, come to the Coptic Church instead of the East. No, I, I don't do this. Um, as long as as they're happy where they are, but not about that, the fact that they're happy, that they find the truth of Christ there. Um, but whoever hasn't, whoever uh, does not know about the church, I, I believe that there's much to be gained there. And um, we have seen many people converting uh, recently and, and talking to us about the beauty and the depth uh, and the richness of the church, which we know we have. Again, I'm not, forgive me, I'm not, I wanna be clear, I'm not saying we're the best in all of this stuff. I don't believe in saying these things, but again, it is a reality. Um, uh, and I'm happy uh, where we're at. Um, sometimes it's difficult in North America to answer your question in the sense that, you know, every state in the, in the States or every province in Canada is a bit different. Uh, Canada is very secular, much more than the U.S. Uh, our province, even more so than the rest of the provinces in Canada. Um, so sometimes that makes things very difficult. And because, you know, uh, especially as priests, because we, we wear the cassock also outside in public, you know, we, um, because of the, our tone of skin and because of our beards and so on, often people think that we are of a different religion. Uh, so it's not always easy to approach people but again i i am hoping that people are are more open-minded you know for their own sake and um they're able to see past you know this beard or this tone of skin or um because some, some people end up being scared for some reason um but all all we want to do is to to bring hope joy and love for the world uh, especially those who are broken um, and I have to say that we do have, uh, I'm sure in other churches too, but I, I just don't know about other churches, but we do have many, many clergy members that are more than fantastic. Um, and it's very clear in certain people that sainthood still exists in the church, uh, and, and people closer than what we think. They're very close to us. You know, I, maybe I get to know because, you know, as a priest or another priest, you get to know. Maybe lay people do, do not see it as much uh, because you know, certain things are hidden from them. Uh, but we, we do have amazing clergy. We have an amazing bishop uh, uh, in many dioceses of the Coptic Church. Um, humble people. We have some ministers in the church you know, that would serve Sunday school or any other ministry that are 
so in love with God and and uh, and they are ready to to give their life you know for God for their children whether in the ministry whether they're biological children like I mean I, I can go on and on it's just like like you see so much life uh, and so much purpose in people and and you know so it's just so encouraging um, and I cannot be more grateful honestly I'm so glad to hear that.